This video is for beginners. What's up everyone, I'm Choa. Today, I'm going to talk about climbing silver. Shogi opening you should learn first. So the purpose of this video is for those who start playing Shogi, understand the basics of opening strategy. Learn the most recommended opening for beginners, climbing silver. Practice using the opening in real games and become stronger, win more games, and have more fun with Shogi. So this is table of contents. What is opening? So there are three stages in Shogi, which is opening, the beginning part of Shogi, middle game, the middle part of Shogi, and end game, the ending part of Shogi. And there are two goals in the opening. So the first one is to prepare to attack for the middle game. And the second one is to prepare to protect king or also known as castling in shogi for the end game. And there are three key ideas in the opening. The first one is let major pieces, which is rook or bishop, active. Notice how this pawn lets the rook active in a vertical line. And notice how this pawn opens the bishop's down line. And the second one is Attack with major pieces and one silver. Notice how this silver with the rook to attack. And actually, this is climbing silver opening. And one of the reasons I recommend this opening for beginners is that it follows the second key idea in the opening, which is attack with major pieces and one silver. And the third one is castle king with the other silver and two golds. Notice how the king is safely castled and cannot be checkmated easily. This castle is called Yagura Castle by the way and I will talk about castles in the other videos. So what is climbing silver? Climbing silver is famous for its aggressiveness. Although its attack is quite simple, if your opponent doesn't know the countermeasure against climbing silver, you can win so fast and easily. The reason it's called climbing silver is that the silver climbs ahead of the rook. So how to play climbing silver? There are some types of climbing silver, but in this video, I will introduce the most basic one, which is primitive climbing silver. And I want you to remember three steps to play primitive climbing silver, which is trade rook's pawn, advance silver, and promote pieces. All right, let's take a look at specific moves. So the first thing you should do is to push the pawn to use the rook vertically. And suppose your opponent doesn't know anything about the opening and just copies what you moved, so which is pawn to a4. And the next thing you should do is to push the pawn again. So the first step in the climbing silver opening is to trade the rook's pawn. It just copies what you did. And the next move may confuse you, but move the gold first. So the purpose of this gold is to protect the bishop's head square. And later, I will also explain what will happen if you move pawn first, so don't worry about it now. So move gold first and your opponent copies what you did. And then you can trade the pawn by moving pawn to 2-4. And if gold keeps copying what you did, which is pawn to 8-6, you can simply take and promote the pawn and Sente has an advantage. So Gote has to take this pawn first and the rook recaptures. And next, Sente will drop the pawn so Gote has to drop the pawn first and the Sante's rook retreats. And Gote copies what you did. So pawn takes, rook takes, and drop pawn here and the rook retreats. And the second step in the climbing silver opening is to advance silver. So move your silver and your opponent just copies what you did and keep advancing the silver by moving silver to 2-6 and silver to 2-5. So the purpose of advancing silver is to break second file by cooperating with the rook. And your opponent just copies what you did. And I want you to stop here for a while and think about it. What should you move in order to break the second file? And the answer is drop pawn here. And the second file is already broken. So 
If Gote copies what you did, you can simply take this pawn and Gold recaptures, but then drop pawn here. And Sente has an advantage. If Gold takes, then the Silver can just recapture and you can win the material. Or if Gold moves here, you can promote the pawn and you can win material again to exchange this pawn and this bishop. So Gote has to take this pawn, but then you can simply recapture. Next, you will drop the pawn. And if Gote drops pawn first, then you can just take this and Gold recaptures and the rook recaptures. And the third step in the climbing silver opening is to promote the piece. And in this position, Sente succeeded in promoting the piece. So Sente has an, an advantage. Instead of dropping pawn here, Gote can also push the pawn, but then you can pro um to 2-3, not promote. The reason you don't promote the silver is that when your opponent moves bishop here, you can promote the um, silver by taking this pawn. And next, you can take either knight or bishop. And the only way to prevent this is bishop to 2-2, two, two, but then pawn drop 2-4 is a technique in shogi. It's called dangling pawn. And the purpose of this is to promote the pawn next and win material. So Sente has an advantage. And if Gote takes this silver, you can simply recapture the gold. And again, there is a promoted piece. So Sente has an advantage. And if Gote moves bishop here, then you can push the pawn. And if Gote moves bishop here, then you can simply promote the silver again. And Sente has an advantage. And if Gote moves bishop here, you can take this gold by silver. And the silver recaptures. But then rook to 2 to promote. Again, there is a promoted piece. So Sente has an advantage. So remember the three steps in the climbing silver opening, which is trade the rook's pawn. Um, advance the silver and the last one is promote pieces. So what will happen if Sente pushes the pawn first before moving gold? That's a very good question and it's very important to analyze many moves in Shogi. So let's take a look. Um, to state my conclusion first, it will be a very difficult game and you don't have to memorize all these moves. So just see what will happen. So after pushing the pawn, Gote will uh, the capture the pawn. The Sente will, will recapture and then Gote will push the pawn. And if Sente drops the pawn first and then Gote takes the pawn and Sente can take the bishop first, but then Silver recaptures and Sente has to retreat the rook to protect the ace file. And Gote moves um, the gold to protect the second file. And Sente pushes pawn to make a room for bishop, but then uh, they will take this bishop and Sente captures this pawn and offers a trade. But then Gote drops pawn to refuse the trade and the Sente's rook moves back and then Gote will drop the pawn. This is also a technique in Shogi and it's called striking pawn. And if Sente takes this pawn, Gote can simply promote the pawn, so Sente has to move the rook, but then king to four two to castle, and Gote has an advantage. You see how the Gote's rook is active in a vertical line, while Sente's cannot use the rook vertically. Um, let's take a look at another example. Instead of dropping pawn here, if Sente takes the pawn, then Gote will drop the pawn, and Sente will also drop the pawn, and Gote takes the bishop, silver takes, and bishop drops 3-5. So the purpose of this bishop is to take the rook, and also take this pawn, and Sente's rook has to retreat, but then bishop takes 3-5 promote, pawn takes, silver takes. Also, it's an even game for both. Because Gote has a strong promoted bishop, it is likely that Gote will win. So now you see what will happen if you push the pawn first and know that Sente cannot 
have an advantage. Let's go back and now you see how you can win so easily your opponent doesn't know countermeasure against climbing silver. It's very important to know the countermeasure because if your opponent plays the climbing silver opening against you, you will lose so fast. So I want you to remember this formation and notice how the rook and b protects this square. All right, let's take a look at specific moves to know the countermeasure against the climbing silver opening. So suppose your gote and sente plays the climbing silver. So the board is reversed. So sente push the pawn and gote will also push the pawn. So push the pawn again and then sente moves the gold to protect the bishop's head. And gote will also protect and sente trade the rook's pawn and gote will also trade the pawn just like sente did but the key is when sente drops pawn here gote should move the rook to a4 the purpose of this move is to use the rook not only vertically but also horizontally to protect the ace file and sente will advance the silver but then um gote will also advance the silver but then um sente advancing the silver and gote opens the bishop's down line and sente just keeps advancing silver and gote moves the bishop here protect this square and when sente the silver moves to 2-5 gote can the pawn and notice how the rook and protects this square and sente cannot drop the pawn because even if sente drops the pawn gote can simply take this and if sente recaptures the rook can take the silver and the gote's bishop protect the rook so gote has a huge advantage so this is the countermeasure against climbing silver so the first step is to retreat the rook to a4 and the second step is to open bishop's down line and move bishops here and the third step is when sente advance the silver to 2-5 move pawn and use the rook horizontally to protect ace file if you want to be better at climbing silver here is a dedicated video showing more details in climbing silver and i will post the link on the description it shows many variations on the climbing silver opening and i'm pretty sure you will be an expert on climbing silver after watching this video so please check it in conclusion, three key ideas in the opening is let major pieces, which is rook or bishop active, attack with major pieces and one silver, and castle king with the other silver and two golds. And three steps for climbing silver opening is trade rook's pawn, advance silver, and promote pieces. Alright, that's it for today. If this video helps, please like. If you have any requests, feel free to comment. I will keep uploading videos for beginners and I will also upload videos for intermediate and advanced players. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you again.